Welcome to the 700 Club Canada. I'm Brian Warren. And I'm Lori Hartshorn. And we're excited that you've joined us today. You know, the program today, you're going to meet two racing brothers who are inspiring others with an incredible act of selfless love. You're going to learn about the special bond between these former Sports Illustrated Kids of the Year. They're pretty awesome. <laughs> and you'll meet two parents who found a way to forgive their daughter's killer and how that decision mm. changed all three of their lives forever. Lori, um, have you ever had to demonstrate uh, selfless love like that, the power of selfless love? Well, I got married. So marriage, isn't it all about selfless love? And then I had children, so you got another more requirements of selfless love. I wonder if Dean love. is listening right now, because he's he's on the top of the list there. Honestly, though, I think I, he's under the bus on I that one. I think it's a good thing. Okay. I think, actually, you know, in our families, and sometimes the ones who are closest to us, whether you're, you know, in your marriage or with your yeah. kids, it does require a selflessness. Yeah. I say one thing parenting does is it just strips the selfishness right out of you, you know? And that's a good thing. Yeah. It's a good thing. Mm. Yeah. And I've often been the recipient of people that have blessed me with their, you know, lack of selfishness and giving and supporting and helping yeah. me in various ways in my life. I remember being sick one time. I don't get sick often, but... This dear friend showed up with a pot of homemade soup, and it just made me cry. I just yeah. thought, wow, you took the time to do that, right? It can be no, as simple that, as that. That's powerful. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. You got and, a story? Uh, you got a story in there? No, I, I had a story, but um, it, it was, I mean, I got caught in that for a moment because I was thinking about my nephew, and it just kind of popped up yeah. when he was murdered, and I had to forgive the guy. Wow. He killed him. That's and, uh, big time So I just kind of got caught in that moment, and I was trying yeah. to just fight through it. So I was going to, I said, please keep talking, Lori. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> well, that's, that's big, though, Brian. Yeah. That's big. That choice yeah. of forgiveness, yeah. right, is a I see, you're tangible staying there too. way. I feel you're staying on I am, too. I am, well, and I'm talk, right? we're talking about it today, but it's a tangible yeah. way to show that selfless love. Yeah, yeah. I've had to walk through those, uh, those shoes. Wow. And we have a powerful courageous living segment a bit later and she's going to tell us just how to do that yeah but first andy and kate face their worst nightmare and this is how an act of love helped them out. the doorbell rang and we were shocked to find a deputy sheriff on the other side of the door with a woman who identified herself as a victim's advocate with the leon county sheriff's office she was the one who told us that ann had been shot Kate and Andy Gromare had just returned home from a Palm Sunday service. When they got the news, their 19-year-old daughter, Anne, had suffered a gunshot wound to the head. Anne had spent the day with her longtime boyfriend, Connor. I asked, was Connor with her? And it was the deputy sheriff who said that Connor had shot her. I couldn't process why that would have happened. I knew it had to have been an accident. It wasn't until we got to the hospital and the detective told us that there had been an argument. Connor immediately turned himself in. For now, the Gromares could only focus on Anne, who was on life support. Her father, Andy, stayed right at her bedside all night, praying. About two o'clock in the morning, I was standing over her bed and I heard her say, uh, forgive him. And you know, she did not say those actual words, but I felt like she was saying it to me because I knew exactly what she was talking about. She was asking me to forgive Connor. And I said, no, I'm not gonna do it, no way. After about 25 minutes of saying no to her, I finally said, I'll try. But there was no, she never woke up. The next day, the deputy told them what had taken place at Connor's house on Sunday. That's when we found out that they had been having a breakup fight and Connor had intended to get his father's shotgun to kill himself. But when Ann came back into the house, they continued to argue and he ended up pulling the trigger and shooting Ann instead. On Thursday, the trauma surgeon showed the Gromares a CAT scan of Anne's brain, riddled with shotgun pellets. It was then they realized there was no hope of her recovery and she would have to be taken off life support. Andy waited by his daughter's bedside. As I was sitting there gazing down at her, I saw her transform in the bed. And what I saw was Christ uh, became one with her, uh, not separate, but just as one completely together. I started sobbing. And it was because I realized that Christ was with my daughter. And I realized that it was not Anne asking me to forgive Connor, it was Jesus. And how could I say no to him who had forgiven me for all my transgressions? 
While at the hospital, Kate discovered Connor had put her name on his jail visitation list. She went to see him the next morning. It was Good Friday. He immediately started crying and said he was sorry for what had happened. And I gave him the message that Andy had given me, and that was that he loved him and forgave him. And I said, Connor, you know I love you, and I forgive you. And once I said those words, I didn't feel like I have needed to take them back then, and I've never felt like I've needed to take them back since. Kate returned to the hospital and was taken off life support that afternoon. She died on Good Friday, and she died in the three o'clock hour, the same hour that Jesus died on the cross. She is in the arms of Jesus. She is in heaven. She is at peace. Through a voluntary legal process called restorative justice, the Gromares were able to sit in a room with Connor while they shared their grief, and he expressed his remorse for shooting Anne. After that meeting, in which Connor revealed details of the two-day argument that preceded Anne's death, they were able to take the first steps toward reconciliation. Forgiveness is my part. Repenting is on the part of the offender, and if you don't have those two pieces, then you don't have reconciliation. Connor was sentenced to 20 years in prison. Andy and Kate visit him regularly and call him weekly. The Gromer's decision to forgive me was the only reason that I ever came to believe in God and believe in Christ. It, there's no other explanation for the forgiveness that Gromer showed me. Normal people do not forgive the man that kills their daughter. Normal people would hate and condemn. Normal people would be angry and hold on to that anger and wish me nothing but evil and probably want me killed. Instead, the Gromers decided to respond with forgiveness and respond in love. And that's, that's nothing but the love of God shining through them. In the years since Anne's death in 2010, Kate and Andy have become a spiritual mother and father to the young man who took their daughter's life, nurturing his newfound faith and even attending his baptism, all because they were able to forgive. Things that forgiveness has done for me is to keep me from being going to prison with Connor, being locked in the cell of my own hatred and anger and bitterness. One thing that Kate said is that she wants me to live a life that's worth two lives, live a life that not makes up for the life I took, but at least puts good back into the world. I've got to give back, I've got to serve others, I've got to help others. I could not define Connor by that one moment, because if I defined Connor by that one moment, then I was defining Anne by that moment as well. And that would make her a murder victim. And she was so much more than that. So every year, even though there's a, a date that is the anniversary of her death, Holy Week will always hold that special message for us that even though there is the, the death on the cross on Good Friday. Resurrection will follow on Easter Sunday. Lori, it's interesting and uh, what Andy said. He said, uh, I had to forgive Connor so I wouldn't go to prison with him. I, I could not stay in that prison. And that prison of when you do not offer forgiveness. You lock yourself in, in your prison. You can't experience freedom. Yeah. Easier said than done though, right, Brian? Yeah. And this is a difficult, I, I don't know how I'd respond. I, I yeah. can't just say I'd, I'd automatically go there because I know forgiveness is actually supernatural. Yeah. It doesn't come naturally to us. I believe there's someone out there right now that's dealing with this. And I was thinking about this. You know, I always hear people talk about Christianity and you know, it's a crutch or this or that. But how about when the foot's on the other, the shoe's on the other foot and you're a defensive end and you have the ability to dismantle something, but God gives you a gentleness to love someone in spite of it and say, I've got to forgive. You know, that's what forgiveness is all about. Only a supernatural power can help you get over the situation. I believe that God is going to break that power and get you out of that prison today. But you got to call the number on the screen, 1-855-759-0700, because I know when he brought my nephew to me, he said, this is going to be for somebody else. Yeah. Somebody else needs to get this too. Yeah. So I'm going to pray with you, but I want you to call that number on the screen if you identify. Jesus, their life has to count. 
And we say you are good and your mercy endures forever. But right now, come on, open up your hands. I pray that you would release that man, that woman, from this horrible prison of unforgiveness into your purpose in Jesus' name, amen. There's great freedom that comes from forgiveness, Brian. Yep. And thank you for sharing your own life. Mm. And, and you know personally of the freedom that comes. Yeah. And that's why we can trust in a God that it enables us to forgive. Yeah. And I love what, you know, here's Connor locked in prison, rightfully so. But he said the only reason that he came to Christ was because of this example of forgiveness. Your forgiveness can set somebody else free and can set them up to follow Jesus. So choose forgiveness today. Up next, Connor and Caden. Will they show us a powerful bond of brotherly love? About 30 minutes outside of Nashville, down an unassuming street, live two new stars of the sports world. The Long Brothers, Team Long Brothers. <laughs> Triathletes, who don't so much compete against each other, but rather race with each other. Racing opened up a door for them that both of them like. When we're at a triathlon and I watch Connor and Caden, you know, participating together in the races, it's it really blows my mind sometimes. I never thought that that would have been possible. You see, Caden suffers from cerebral palsy, which affects his motor skills. Life with Caden is very demanding. He wants a lot of attention. He needs a lot of attention. Then, in 2011, his older brother Connor had an idea. Why not try racing together? Before racing, he was always kind of in his bedroom. It isn't easy. Caden can't walk or even talk, so Connor has to push or pull him the entire way. For a kid's triathlon, it's a 100-meter swim, three miles on a bike, and a half-mile run. Grueling enough for a nine-year-old, let alone one who's carrying his little brother. In my first race, I was second to last. I was very tired and it was very hard because I haven't trained and my legs, they weren't fit for that and couldn't run for a long time. But they never quit. They've entered more than a dozen races together. To see Connor out there and, you know, he sacrificed the medals, the first, second, and third medals. He sacrificed all the winnings, um, you know, just to let his brother be able to get the feel of what it meant to be an athlete be out there competing. I've wondered what it would be like if I did one by myself, but I've never thought to myself, I want to do a race by myself. Caden, he loves to swim and he loves to bike and he loves to do all that thing and he loves to go fast. It wouldn't be very right to leave a little kid out of that. But when Jenny was told about her son's condition, she did think Caden would be left out when I was still pregnant with Caden, and I bought this picture. And the picture was of two young boys, and they were pretty close in age, you could tell, and they were sitting on the dock, and they were fishing together, and I bought that picture to hang in their nursery. And when I found out the diagnosis, I immediately thought of that picture, because I immediately thought that that was not gonna be what, that's not gonna be possible. They're not gonna be able to be close. I went through like a hard time, um, a lot of depression, a lot of just wondering why. I wondered what went wrong, you know, what can I do, what, how, can I, how can I fix this? Then I was really mad, went through the moments I was mad at God a little bit. Her anger turned to depression. Then she turned to the Psalms. Psalms 40, verse 2. 
it was like I was stuck in the mud, you know? Like, I was just stuck in that, that mud. I just wanted to feel happy again. I was tired of feeling down. He took my feet and he put it back on solid ground. But I still have hard times, and, and, and that's normal. And I still get to the dark side sometimes, but that's when I go and I pray to God, please, you know, just help me, Lord, help me get through this day. People if I say, why do you say that that was a blessing? Why do you say that having a son with special needs was a blessing? I think God has a plan for everyone's lives. Just sometimes people want to know that plan right away. You know, it takes time to find your purpose, um, to find, you know, your strengths and what God's plan for you is. And at the time when we got a diagnosis, all we could see with our physical eyes was heartache. Caden wouldn't be able to walk. He wouldn't be able to do any of this. But, you know, I learned to have faith that there was a greater purpose and a greater plan in God. And I think God has allowed this platform to show people that, you know, we're all wonderfully made. Meanwhile, Team Long Brothers race on. And though they may not win races, they are winning attention for their perseverance, sportsmanship, and most of all, brotherly love. Me and Caden racing together, I would consider that bromance. They're teammates. They both cross together, you know, and it's it's not about winning first, second, or third. It was just about them doing something together and making it through that line and beating all the challenges that they had to face. It's, it's really powerful. I love that, you know, bromance and just spending time with your brother. You know, he ain't heavy, he's my brother. And did you see that? You know, the first race, you said we came second to last, but we were still champions. <laughs> yes, they are champions. You know, many times I believe we've, we put too much value in how many ribbons, how many trophies, how many things that we receive. But I believe some of the biggest and the greatest and the most meaningful rewards come by our giving ourselves to others. And not only when we win, but when others win as well. I think that's really the story of being a champion. Team, together, everyone accomplishes more. It's very difficult for you to have a really good moment of saying, yeah, high five and a bump when you're by yourself. I remember running a Spartan race last year, and it was miserable. I'm telling you, there were 13 hills, and I was so exhausted. And by that, that seventh hill, I was just on the verge of just saying, oh, how the mighty have fallen. <laughs> I was struggling, but I had a brother with me and uh, a dear friend, uh, Gavin Lawrence. And he ran uh, for Canada in the Olympics, and he could have just done this whole thing and, like, split. I'm talking about the fastest time. But he stayed with me. And uh, I think that's what uh, this really speaks of. Who do you have around you that stays with you? If you don't have anyone, we're here for you. You know, the number on the screen, 1-855-759-0700 is there. But listen to this, Isaiah, or excuse me, Psalms 40 and 2. He also brought me out of a horrible pit and out of a miry clay, and he set my feet upon a rock, and he established my steps. I believe God wants to establish your steps today. And he wants to encourage you that you're not by yourself but you've got a great family around you. Why don't you access that? 1-855-759-0700. We're here for you. But up next, Lori returns with more Courageous Living. Don't go away. You say that God will move heaven and earth to keep us from being misled. Is that negative guidance? What is that? If you ask God, don't let me be misled. And you're his servant. You know, the thing of it is, you're a child, and your child comes to Daddy and says, Daddy, uh, please don't let me make a mistake. Please help me. And what's a father going to say? No, kid, you could, you're on your own. God will say, well, you're my child. You've asked for help, and I'll give you help. So God will, I said, will move heaven and earth to keep you from being misled. So you think you're going in a particular direction, and God will say, no, no, wait a minute. No, I'm going to put a block out here. I'm not going to let you you know, go that way, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna block your path so you won't make a mistake. I'm gonna keep you from, from error and from trouble if we ask that.
We've all been hurt by others, whether it's been hurtful words that were spoken, false accusations, or the betrayal of another. So what's your response when you're hurt? Maybe self-preservation, or you fight back, or simple avoidance. No matter our response, it's easy to hold onto the hurt. And it has a way of growing into this ugly thing called bitterness. <laughs> bitterness grows like a deep root in our life that eventually robs us of joy and wholeness in relationships. So what do you do when you're hurt, offended, or betrayed? Well, the Bible is really clear that we're to choose the way of love. Easier said than done, right? This way of love is actually Christ's way. His example to us of what it really means to love. If anyone had the right to fight back or protect themselves, it was Christ. He lived a perfect life and yet was ridiculed, falsely accused, betrayed, and condemned to a death he didn't deserve. It's quite humbling to reflect on his response. He chose love. His last words reflect this. Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they do. This is the way of love, forgiveness. It's unnatural because it's actually supernatural. It requires the power of the Spirit in us to enable us to respond like Christ. To choose forgiveness and to show love, even to those who don't deserve it, this is the way we show God's love. We reflect who He is when we're able to forgive. See, forgiveness doesn't mean that you condone what someone has done, but it simply means that you don't hold it against them. You take them off your hook and place them on God's. And you let God be their judge. What does offering forgiveness do for you? Well, it gives you freedom and peace. Even if others don't change or see their wrongdoing, you can be free to love. 1 John 4, verses 7 to 11 remind us why we are to choose this way of love. It says, dear friends, let us continue to love one another for love comes from God. Anyone who loves is a child of God and knows God. But if anyone who does not love does not know God, for God is love. God showed how much he loved us by sending his one and only son into the world so that we might have eternal life through him. This is real love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. Dear friends, since God loved us that much, we surely ought to love each other. Do you hear it in those verses? It's pretty clear, isn't it? If we say we love God, then we're to love others and catch it. We're able to love not because we're so loving, but because God loved us first and our response to his great love for us is to give it away to others. That's why we can forgive. Jesus also gives us a warning in Matthew 6 when he says, if you forgive those who sin against you, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you refuse to forgive others, your heavenly Father will not forgive your sins. Wow, forgiveness is apparently a big deal to Jesus. He knows that if we will hinder, it will hinder us from being able to receive God's love and forgiveness for others if we cannot forgive ourselves. So how do we do it? Well, here's four things you can do today to help you on that journey of forgiveness. First, examine your own heart. Ask God to forgive you for any ugliness in your own heart, and then you will be ready and able to show love to others and offer them forgiveness. And secondly, pray for your offender. Ask God to show you how he loves them. And third, show love to your offender. Now that might be a stretch, but reach out to them just as God would. This week, what's one specific way you can show love to those who haven't been loving to you? And number four, forgive your offender. If this is so hard for you, ask God to make you willing to be willing to forgive. Forgiveness starts when you seek to forgive. You know, as long as you feel like you have no right to forgiveness, you will be tormented by bitterness. So today, let's show God's love by choosing to forgive those who have hurt us. For this is the way of love, and that's courageous living. Jesus said it, I came to give you life, life to the fullest, life in your family, life in your finances, life in your body, mind, and spirit, life in your every day.
We're here to help you discover life. Lori, I really appreciate your courageous living. Thank you, Brian. Yeah. I think uh, forgiveness is this thing that is a powerful resource in our life if we'll, you know, let it have its way. I believe yes. it could be one of the most powerful principles, uh, especially in a walk, because it's impossible, as it says in Luke 17, 1, that offense would not come. Oh. So I, I really believe we're going to have to get over something. So forgiveness is yeah. really a powerful gift. You're right. And I know that in this teaching that Pat Robertson does, yeah. he outlines, you know, keys to mm -hmm. finding God's plan and purpose for your life. And I can guarantee you, Forgiveness is one of them. You're going to need it. Yeah. It's a freedom in your life. And if you just need a resource today, or maybe it's your day that you think, I really want to partner with you guys to help bringing these stories of encouragement and good teaching, give us a call, 1-855-759-0700. You know, for as little as $20 a month or your best gift, we'll send you this uh, great resource to help you along your way. Call now. It'd be such an encouragement. 1-855-759-0700. And would you put on your prayer list? Tanya, she's in Alberta. She needs strength, and she needs to forgive her brother-in-law. And there's a friend in B.C. asking for grace to forgive, too. we got a theme going on here, Brian. Wow. Well, Father, we believe that that is a, uh, an area that we all need right now. So we're asking that you would, not only for Tanya, but you would also do the same thing, Lord, for grace that you would grant us the grace. But today, give us, Lord, that green light that the door is open, the prison is broken, mm -hmm. and that you have liberated us by the blood of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. We say thank you, yeah. and we receive it on their behalf. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' Amen. name. May forgiveness be a blanket that covers our nation. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Psalm 52, 8 and 9 say, But I am like an olive tree, flourishing in the house of God. I trust in God's unfailing love forever and ever. For what you have done, I will always praise you in the presence of your faithful people. And I will hope in your name, for your name is good. Mm -hmm. That's a good word for That's today, That's a great it? word. Yeah. What a word. Hey, hold on to it. Until next time, we love you. God bless. Take care. To contact us, phone 1-855-759-0700. You can email us at cba at 700club.ca or write to us at Christian Broadcasting Associates, Incorporated. The 700 Club Canada, P.O. Box 700, Scarborough, Ontario, M1S 4T4. You can now like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter or Instagram.